Hey guys, this is Alex from Wilkinson Audio. Uh, I'm going to show you how to extract MIDI from recorded drum tracks. And I can think of a few ways to do that off the top of my head. Uh, first of all, this uh, track here is from a band called uh, Cognizance. I think they're a UK uh, metal band, and this was recorded by Eel Levy. Uh, you're not really going to get an idea of what the band sounds like from this track, but I just like to give credit uh, from on the tracks I'm using to, to teach people this stuff. Um, so we're just going to slice this out, first of all. And then we're going to uh, open our effects chain here and we're going to add Reagate to uh, this track. And then we're going to just try and get it to catch just the transients here. And we're just going to try and get it as tight as possible. So that should be okay uh, for this example. And then we'll just make a new track. We'll right click the record arm button and go record output MIDI. And then we're going to route this track by clicking the route button and dragging it. And we're going to route it to this track. And then for the audio send, instead of one, two, we don't want to send any audio, we just want MIDI data. We're just going to select none. Otherwise it would just record the audio to this track potentially. Um, and then hit record. And then we'll just uh, hit record again and it'll the rear gate, oh sorry, we had to check off send MIDI on open close as well. So on rear gate, it's going to make MIDI notes as the gate opens and closes, and then it's going to send them to this track, and this track's going to record the output of that MIDI. Okay. Cool, so that's one way to do it. Let's get rid of that effect. And then another way we can do it is we can just insert trigger. If you have this plugin, a lot of people have this, so this will probably work for a lot of people. And then all you do is you just play it. Oops, sorry, you gotta adjust your, uh, I think it's called detail, your threshold here, until it's correct. And I don't have a sample selected, so it won't make any noise right now, but. Let me just make sure this is, okay, perfect. All right, so let's just hit clear uh, buffer and then we're just gonna play this. And it's figuring out where all the hits are. And then once it's done that, uh, we can actually just drag the MIDI right out of this plugin right into the DAW. And it's finished up there. Okay, and now we just drag it onto the track and then there's our MIDI again, okay. So that's another way to do it. And then the third way to do it, which I think is probably the best way in Reaper, is you hit D and you bring up dynamic split. And you dynamic split the items. And we're just going to adjust uh, all of our, our transient thresholds and sensitivities and everything to uh, till we get the most uh, drum hits correctly uh, slicing at the transient. So that looks pretty close. Actually, I think we have pretty much all of them right there, which is which is good. And then uh, you need create chromatic MIDI item from slices checked off, and then you're just gonna want you're just gonna want to split that, and you're gonna get something that looks like this. We open the MIDI, and hang on, I'll turn that back to rectangles. You can turn. You might want to change it to to drum mode, which is just the diamonds. Then it won't matter what the note length is. Or you can, uh, this is how they normally look, how they'll normally come out. Grab them all, uh, right click. Hang on, it's somewhere in here. Where is it? Uh, sorry, it's no properties F2. Or I think that's command F2 or something like that. What is that actually? Yeah, command F2. And then go note and snare drum is uh, 38. You might know that, you might not, but you can just, it'll make them all the same note. Change the length to like one thirty second or something like that. And then you have MIDI data. The nice thing about this is it captures the velocities as well when you use dynamic split. Uh, Slate does as well. It doesn't seem to do nearly as good of a job as dynamic split does. Because dynamic split, the, the velocities correlate a lot better to the visual uh, of the sound I find. Um, and then Reagate doesn't capture the velocities at all, which is kind of a problem. 
So anyways, that's, uh, that's the last way you could do it here. Um, and you could of course bring these up or whatnot, but let's, uh, let's just make these all uh, diamond mode here. And we're just gonna check these for accuracy and see uh, which one is the most accurate. So this is, um, this one was dynamic split. I believe, yeah, that's dynamic split. This one's reagate, and this one is trigger. And we're going to zoom in. And we're going to look at some transients. Actually, I'll fix this so we can see it easier. And we're just going to go and look at some transients here and see how they line up. Okay, so here's the beginning of the transient. Dynamic split is almost perfect. Trigger is off. Reagate's off. Let's check out this one. Again, dynamic split, pretty much perfect. Ray gates off, triggers off. And this one, let's check this guy out. This one, dynamic split, again, is perfect. Ray gates off and triggers off. Let's try lining them all up. Maybe they're all delayed by the same amount, so let's just try and line them all up here and see what happens if we go to another one. Okay, and let's go back over here to this guy, which didn't trigger, I guess, on Ray gate. Maybe our release was too long or something. Okay, so now dynamic split again is pretty much on. Trigger is pretty close. Uh, Reagate is off. This one here, dynamic split is on. Uh, trigger is off and reagate's off. So dynamic split seems to be the most accurate uh, out of these three techniques. So that's what I would definitely go with. Um, and then what we would, would, would do from here is we'll just add like an instance of superior or something like that. Okay, and then we'll go just with the avatar kit. And then we'll select these tracks, turn them down a bit. Actually, let's put them in a new folder track just by dragging them into here. Whoops. There we go. And then I'll show you something cool here. Let's just make sure this is triggering first of all. I'm going to turn these up so it actually reflects kind of more so the velocities of the performance. So a little harder than that, I would say. Okay, that's probably close enough. And then uh, we'll select these two. Actually, we'll select this one, and then we'll go right-click, track grouping parameters, and do volume master. And then we'll select this one and go track grouping parameters, volume slave, and reverse volume. And I'll show you why we do that. This is just kind of a cool trick. Just bonus stuff. And now we can, uh, when we turn this track down, whoops, I might have messed that up. I think we needed to. I think that should have been right. Let me try this again here. Oh, sorry. The This first track should have ma volume master on, and it shouldn't have reverse volume on. And then the volume slave track here should have just volume slave and reverse volume on. And then when you turn this one up, the slave one turns down. And it just helps you uh, blend the, uh, the volumes like, like so. I'll show you. Just turn this bus down to make sure it's not too loud. So if you want more raw track, we'll turn this one up. If we want more of the sample track, we'll turn it down. It helps us find a nice balance. The other thing that's smart to do is you actually just uh, apply track effects to this and you ensure that your, when you're using samples, this is always a good idea. Uh, check for, for your phase and polarity that they're correct. Also, it's never a bad idea to kind of move them back to be totally on time. It looks like this will probably sound better if it's uh, phase inverted. So we'll just invert the phase here and then this should sound pretty cool. So that's how you MIDI out your drums and hopefully that was useful and you learned something and yeah, so just subscribe and if you have anything else you want me to make tutorials on, just let me know and thanks for watching and have a great day.